in the golf swing, we could create more clubhead speed by creating more torque. Now, what is torque? Well, torque is the twisting or turning force that allows an object to swing around a specific axis of rotation. And there are two variables that causes that torque to increase or decrease. We can either A, increase or decrease the amount of force we produce, and two, increase or decrease the length of the moment arm at which we produce that force. And so when it comes to force, force is generally trying its effort. So trying to do something harder, right? So for example, if I jump this far versus if I jump this far, right? The second jump, I produce more force. And that comes to do has to do with the amount of strength that we have, right? So that would be getting stronger in the gym. However, when it comes to the moment arm, the moment arm is the length at which that axis of rotation and that force has, right? And the longer we can have that, then the more torque we can actually create, which is that twisting or turning force. So let's get into the specifics of how we can go about creating more torque using natural things that we do on an everyday basis and then applying it to the golf swing. Now let's think, how do we go about producing torque using the moment arm on an everyday basis? Well, it's how we generally move around the natural world. So let's give an example. So if I were to lift my trail leg laterally, right? Like this, right? That involves a moment arm. Now, why is that? Well, my trail leg here or my trail hip, the top of my trail hip is the axis of rotation in which the force will be moving around, right? And the force is coming from my trail foot, right? And so my axis of rotation and my foot where the force is being applied are lined up. But now the more that I have my foot move laterally, the more force I'm producing in my glute medius. So the outside of my glute here. And when I lower it, now that amount of force dissipates. Again, also with the bicep curl. So if I had a, if I had a dumbbell here, the axis of rotation would be the inside of my elbow, right? My elbow joint. And then from here, the force in which I'm applying is at my hand. And so the axis of rotation and the force are all lined up. But as I move my hand up, right, now that length is increasing, which allows that force to be produced at my bicep. So as mentioned, we create moment arms every single day. So now what we need to do is apply that same concept to the golf swing using two different things, our center of mass and our center of pressure. And this can be complicated at times to understand, but I'm going to show you a visual and a tangible example to help you understand this. I hate to admit this, that I was once in your shoes where I was scrolling on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok on the latest golf tip to help me improve my golf game. Did that work for me? maybe for about a few days or a week, but it never helped me improve long-term. So what I learned and what you need to learn is that you need to know what your body can do physically and also what your most optimal golf swing is to help you improve your golf game. So how does that come into picture with me? Well, I will help you to understand your most optimal golf swing using both a TPI physical assessment to see what you can do physically along with sports box AI tech AI technology to help you to understand what your body is currently doing and then also tracking the progress of specific parameters that we focus on to help you to improve your golf game. Ready to take action to improve your golf game on a long-term basis? Comment down below the word assess and let's get started. Now that we understand how we apply the principle of torque and creating a bigger moment arm in daily life, now how can we apply that to the golf swing? Well, the rule of thumb is the longer that moment arm is, the more torque you could create, which will also increase the angular velocity, right? And so that is the club bed speed that we want access to. So now I'm going to demonstrate how we can apply that in a golf swing. 
and that will be using two different centers, right? So that is our center of mass and our center of pressure. And so I'm going to visually help you to understand this. So let's say if this club is right in the center of my body right here. And also now I'm going to take my keys here and also put this in the middle of my body right here. So the axis of rotation will be our center of mass. So that would be this club. And my center of pressure will be indicated by my keys. And so if I move, right, if I move a little bit this way, as you can see, the keys are moving a lot more in relation to my center of mass, right? And so just like that example that we demonstrated, if we can create a bigger moment arm, then that will give us more torque, right? And so what I'm doing here is moving my center of pressure while my center of mass is staying relatively still. It's not staying completely still because we have to move it a little bit, but in relation, my center of mass, my center of pressure is moving a lot more. And so just like we talked about, if my center of mass is the axis of rotation and my center of pressure and where I'm applying the force is bigger in length, then I'm creating a bigger moment arm to create more torque, right? And the other way it applies as well. So if I move my pressure this way, right? So I'm moving towards my left foot. I'm applying more pressure, right? But my center of mass is staying relatively still. And so even in that case, in that direction, I'm creating a bigger moment arm. So in the golf swing, to increase our club at speed, rather than just producing more force, we can create a bigger moment arm. And we can do this by pressure, right? And so if I get my pressure to move before I move my mass, then that would allow me to create that bigger moment arm, right? A lot of times golfers are doing this, right? My center of mass and my center of pressure are moving at the same time and they're in line with each other. And as you can see, there's no separation between those keys and this golf club, my center of mass. But instead, if I'm going this way, right, my center of mass is relatively still, but my center of pressure is moving a lot more, which would create that bigger moment arm and lead to creating more torque and angular velocity within our golf swing, which will create more club at speed. So now what I'm gonna do to help you to apply this using a drill, I'm gonna use the kettlebell drill, which everybody knows, but explain specifically how that drill will help you to create a bigger moment arm to create more torque and also create more club head speed. So now let's use this kettlebell drill, an analogy called the kettlebell momentum drill to help you to understand how it will help you to create a bigger moment arm to create more club head speed. So just like that analogy that we discussed with the keys and the golf club, when I'm setting up for this momentum drill, right? Most golfers, when they swing this kettlebell first, they're going to do this, right? And when you do this, just like those keys in that golf club, my center of mass and my center of pressure are lined up. They're moving at the same rate, right? There's no separation in it, and we're not creating more length in that moment arm, right? Versus when I do this, so... My center of mass is still relatively here, but when I get this kettlebell out this way, that gets my center of pressure moving back. So that key is now swinging this way, right? But my center of mass is still relatively still. And so from here, now we're creating a bigger moment arm, right? So say if those keys, my pressure is right here, but my center of mass is still right here. That creates that separation, which thus will create more torque and also angular velocity to get this kettlebell swinging back, right? And the same thing applies in a downswing, right? So now my center of pressure is already moving left, right? However, my center of mass, looking at my chest and the middle of my hips are still relatively in the center, right? And so now that creates another moment arm allowing this kettlebell to swing through. So even when it comes to applying this principle is that it doesn't take 
a lot to do this because all I'm doing is applying my center of pressure to move first before my mass moves, right? So even looking here, I have my pressure going right and left in my foot without my center of mass really going anywhere. The key is with this drill, as long as you can get the kettlebell and your pressure to oppose each other, you will always have your center of mass relatively in the middle while getting that center of pressure moved back and forth will to create more torque, right? The problem is, is if this kettlebell and my center of mass are moving in the same direction, my center of pressure is moving, but my center of mass is moving too much too. So versus if it's an opposition, right? So this kettlebell's out here while my pressure's moving back. Now I'm creating that bigger length, right? And then vice versa, as soon as this kettlebell crosses the middle of my body, now I'm going to be applying more pressure onto my trail foot, right? And now I'm creating that moment arm again. And then as we move back into the follow through, now in order to stay balanced and to decelerate, obviously our center of mass and center of pressure have to come together. But the key is, is creating that separation and it doesn't take a lot, but it's a matter of timing, right? So instead of you thinking, I'm going to turn and rotate to get to the backswing, instead, you need to think, let my pressure start first and let it pull it into a position, right? And this will actually help you to be more athletic in your golf swing instead of having to think about how to do this. Instead, you're using your pressure and the ground and gravity to help you to get into a position that you want. And that'll create less thought on the golf course and help you to shoot better scores. So now what I'm going to do is give you a drill to use with the golf club to help you also to apply this principle when it comes to physics and how we naturally move our bodies on a daily basis to create more torque, more angular velocity, and more club head speed. So now after understanding how we can apply that kettlebell drill to create bigger moment arms, to create more torque, and result in more club head speed, now I'm going to give you a drill that you can apply to help you to understand this immediately when you're on the driving range, right, to practice. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this golf club, right, set it in the middle of your body, and then I want you to get the club head more forward out here, right, and I want you to have it on the ground, right? So, and I want you to start in a static state, right? So I want it to be still at this point. And now what I want you to do is I want you to drag this golf club through the grass and get it to come up in your backswing, right? With speed, right? And if I want to apply speed to this and drag it out of the grass from a static position, rather than me going here, right? Where, as you see, my center of mass and my center of pressure are not creating that moment arm and they're moving at the same time. Instead, if I get this pressure going first, right? So here, while my center of mass is relatively still, now, as you can see, now I can get this club up quicker, right? So I'm gonna try that again. So I'm gonna have it static at my lead foot here. And then what I'm gonna do is apply that pressure, right? Get that center of pressure moving right this way. And when I actually move right, I'm pushing off the left. So that's what creates that moment arm. So then, now I'm going to get this club up to move quicker through the grass. And then I want you to do the same thing to apply it to the downswing. So now take the club and put it just behind your trail foot, right? And your goal is to get this club to get through the grass and to the follow through. And so if I were to do this, when I get my center of mass and my center of pressure to move at the same time, not creating that moment arm, it would be like this, right? That's not creating enough speed versus... If I have it where I get that pressure to go first, right, then because I'm creating that torque, more torque using that bigger moment arm, now I can sling it through the grass, right? And you even saw as a result, because I'm pushing onto my lead foot that I'm pushing off my right, that my foot actually slipped, right? So let's try that again. So instead of here, right, it's just pressure here. Now, from here, I can get this club to sling out of the grass 
because I'm creating that bigger moment arm. So I want you to apply those two drills with the kettlebell and this golf club to help you to understand how to create a bigger moment arm with those two centers to create more torque in your golf swing, which will lead to more club head speed. And this is a principle that every single golfer can apply. It'll help you to improve your club head speed, will help you to prevent your slice because most times those who slice the golf ball have a path that is too far outside to end. When you do this, this will shift your path out more inside to out, which will help you to straighten out your golf shots. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and stay tuned for the next video.